Chafee Lecturer, and also to present you with the Chafee Memorial Lecture uh, plaque. So if you'd come forward, we'll be delighted to hear from you. Thank you, Rita, for the very kind introduction. I'd certainly like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to give uh, the Chafee Lecture here in Washington. I'd also like to congratulate the uh, three uh, Lifetime Achievement uh, Award winners, uh, particularly my good friend uh, E.O. Wilson, uh, who's been a, certainly an inspiration uh, for me. I'm supposed to talk to you about a genomic view of life, uh, one I've been gathering myself over the years. Uh, let me first tell you a little bit about our organization. Uh, this is the Venture Institute about 15 miles from here in Rockville, Maryland. We have a campus of five buildings. Uh, this is a not-for-profit 501c3 organization uh, that was actually the uh, merging of five different not-for-profits uh, that we had uh, starting with Tiger back in 1992. We've also now uh, expanded to the West Coast, uh, and this is our current uh, building in La Jolla, California. Uh, and we're trying to put some of our uh, thoughts into practice. Uh, we've worked on designing uh, and hope to be building uh, soon the first zero carbon research building on the UCSD uh, campus uh, in La Jolla, uh, something that's a real challenge uh, and unfortunately cost about twice as much as a, a non-environmentally friendly building. Uh, also, uh, we started, uh, we being Ham Smith and uh, myself and a few others, a biotech company uh, in La Jolla called Synthetic Genomics that's trying to put some of uh, the work that we developed into uh, action with new uh, sources of fuel. Now we've always tried to uh, ask big questions, uh, maybe uh, ones that you've all asked yourself, at least some of these. Uh, what is life? Uh, you probably all haven't asked yourself whether you can digitize it or not, um, but you should have. Uh, uh, you've certainly asked how extensive is it. Um, reductionist biology is sort of summarized and can we pare it down uh, to its most basic components, but I'll give you a unique view of that. And then something that uh, is uh, something you probably have not thought of is, can we regenerate that life uh, back again out of the digital uh, world? So digitizing biology was uh, what the genome revolution was all about. Uh, reading the genetic code of various species. And as Rita said, we started with the uh, first genome of a living organism uh, uh, in history in 1995 with Haemophilus influenza. We did a second species that year that was supposedly had the smallest genome of any living organism, uh, Mycoplasma uh, gen uh, genitalium. Uh, and I'll talk more about that as we try to define a minimal basis of life and evolution. Uh, and the third genome uh, came out just uh, shortly after that was the first archaea working uh, with Carl Woese trying to prove that in fact the archaea were indeed a, a third uh, branch of life. And this is when our horizons uh, greatly expanded about the gene uh, and microbial diversity uh, on the planet. It was only five years after the first genome where we expanded to actually do uh, the human genome. Uh, the first draft in 2000 and 2001. Uh, and as you think about diversity, you may not think about yourselves as part of biodiversity, uh, but we actually had the wrong answer in 2001. Uh, everybody thought we differed from each other by only one letter out of a thousand. It turns out uh, just uh, late last year we finished the first complete uh, genome of an individual. And from this, now having the full uh, set of chromosomes uh, deployed a genome, we understand now that we differ from each other uh, by about one to three percent. That's a big difference than one out of a thousand. Uh, I like it as an individual has seen uh, much more uh, diversity. Uh, it, it caused some uh, problems uh, briefly because a number uh, that we helped generate uh, with Svante Pabo is that we differed from chimpanzees by 1.27 percent. 
Now we know we differ from each other by one to three percent. So this is a group that hopefully is disturbed by the first number. Uh, uh, fortunately, that number two has now been revised to looking at all the types of variation uh, to five to six percent. Uh, so we're back in our comfort range uh, once again. Uh, now, it was after the first draft of the human genome that we were trying to look around at other key issues. Uh, we've done a lot of microbial diversity, mostly human pathogens, uh, some environmental organisms. But we had this notion that developed out of, in fact, looking at some clinical isolates, that our tools were so powerful we could actually look at complex environments and resolve them at the level of the genetic code uh, back in the computer. We decided to do a test experiment, and, and this is in the area of how extensive life is. Uh, even my good friend D.O. Wilson, uh, hopefully he's still here, he disappeared somewhere, and there he is. Uh, 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 didn't think a whole lot about the microbial world and, and, until, as he pointed out, the last page of his book. Um, but uh, a number, I think, that Rita helped generate uh, each milliliter of seawater we know now has about a million uh, bacteria uh, and about 10 million viruses. Uh, I'll show you some spots with some uh, much more interesting uh, diversity uh, in the non-visible part of our world. But we started the Global Ocean Sampling Expedition uh, taking samples off of Bermuda uh, and filtering the seawater in a very simple protocol, just through different size filters, putting the filters in the freezer, then taking them back to our lab in Rockville, and sequencing all the DNA at once from all the organisms captured on the different filters. Uh, this seemed like a pretty simple idea. Uh, we chose the Sargasso Sea because all the marine biologists said it was a very simple environment We'd only find a few organisms there. Uh, uh, none of our funders believed these tools would work, so we thought we'd start with the simple. Turns out it wasn't so simple. Uh, after about 1.3 million new genes, uh, we sort of ran out of money and stopped sequencing. Uh, so in this one paper in 2004, we doubled the number of uh, genes uh, known to the scientific community uh, in one uh, single study. And we were thinking, we could keep sampling in Bermuda until we kind of saturated there. But there were some relatively abundant sequences and some real rare ones. And we thought maybe if we sampled in different parts of the world, some of those rare ones would be abundant there. And by taking a fewer set of samples, we could generate a gene catalog of the planet, uh, the same that some of you were thinking of in species. I also was looking for a good excuse to sail my boat around the world. Uh, and we tried to follow the route of other famous expeditions, uh, uh, such as the Challenger Expedition, and take sample roughly every 200 miles uh, around the globe. Uh, and this is the route uh, that we uh, followed roughly around the equator, uh, starting in Halifax, uh, uh, as did the Challenger Expedition. Now, uh, being a molecular biologist in the human genome, I didn't really uh, understand all the problems of studying biodiversity. Uh, and all the legal ramifications thereof. Uh, and we had a team set up uh, because we found that a great part of uh, the world is, uh, uh, all the biodiversity is owned by different uh, countries, uh, and we had to uh, work out a variety of arrangements just to be able to sail through uh, waters uh, and uh, collect uh, some water. Uh, we were governed by two major laws. Most of you are familiar with these. Uh, the law of the sea and the convention on biodiversity. Uh, which this that wouldn't be simple. Uh, there's much more confusion about the convention on biological diversity uh, and the distinction of what's done for basic science and what's done for commercial work. Uh, if we were trying to do things commercially, it would have been a whole lot easier because governments know how to sign those agreements uh, where they get something out of it. It was much more difficult trying to give all the uh, data away. Uh, Bob Friedman, uh, who's here and head of our uh, uh, policy uh, group, uh, headed up the team with all the procedures, uh, working through the State Department with all the various uh, uh, countries. 